Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how we will take this virtual machine we created earlier and get it set up to be our domain controller, as well as get it set up for the initial DNS requirements of our later visa deployment. So we have quite a few tasks for us to go through here. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is make sure we have a static IP address set up on this machine here. And uh, let's see here, we could give it an IP like dot 51, for example. Let's say DNS in there. Now, uh, normally I would say uh, this should just be some public DNS, but later on this will be changed to the uh, local host or 127.0.0.1 because it becomes a domain controller. But uh, for now, we'll leave it like this. All right, then we obviously want to make sure that this machine has the correct name. And it has some random name here from earlier, so we'll call it Domain Controller 01. Okay, it'll cost us a restart to get set up. So one of the next steps basically is that once we log in again to go to the server manager and basically kick off the process of deploying Active Directory onto this server. Okay, should not take too much time to start up here. Yeah, there we go. I'm still using VMware Workstation here, but uh, I'll move to using the real HTML5 vSphere client later on once we get uh, the vCenter deployed. Okay, so we have the server manager up and running here. No, I don't want to use the Windows Admin Center. Maybe in the future, who knows? Okay, so what do we have that we want to do? So first of all, add roles and features. So, okay, I can't do that. It's still still collecting up here. All right, that should be it. Oops, I misclicked. Add roles and features. There we go. Destination server DC01. Next, role-based, feature-based. Yes, this is the server. That makes sense. And what we're looking to deploy is Active Directory Domain Services. There'll be some prerequisites, so we'll go and add those as well. Next, I'm not going to add anything else here, just leave it as default. Okay, next, yes, if you need to restart, that's completely fine. You could uh, even go here and uh, start getting some, some information, like you could export some of these settings if you wanted to. It shouldn't be necessary. Okay, then it's basically going to start installing these different items. But just be aware that that's not in its own going to turn this into a domain controller. But uh, basically what I'll do is I'll pause the video while we wait for this to finish. Okay, so we can see the feature installation has completed. Installation succeeded. Next additional steps required to make this machine a domain controller. Promote this server to a domain controller. Awesome, let's click on that. And add a domain control to an existing domain. No, I don't have an existing domain. We would have to specify it. It's an existing forest. Well, I don't have an existing forest, so it's going to be a new forest. And for me, I'm going to call it hasland.lab. Next. <clears throat> you could also pick something else like .local or something. That's fine. Forest functional level. We can see the newest one is 2016. The main function that's the same. A directory services restore mode. So this is in case something goes bad. So I'm going to basically use the same password everywhere. Not what you should be doing in production, but for the lab, that just makes things a little bit easier. Delegation cannot be created because this is not a domain controller right now. It doesn't have DNS. So that makes sense. We'll ignore that. NetBIOS domain name. So the Hasland.lab is like a fully qualified domain name or just a domain name, you could say. But for NetBIOS, we don't have any dot anything, so it's just Hasland. I'm good with that. Next, there's some character limitations here, so try avoiding to use some long name. Uh, we could have put this on a separate disk if we wanted to. I prefer not to, uh, since this is a lab in production. Well, maybe it would not have been a bad idea to put it on a separate disk. 
Then we can even see a script here, a PowerShell script, if we wanted to automate all of this. Um, I'm not too interested in that right now. So we'll say next. We'll check all of the prerequisites. Hopefully they are all successful. Let's see. Yeah, so we get some warnings here about NT4. I don't plan to have any NT4, so that's all fine. Prerequisites check completed. Everything is good. Click install. So I'm going to click install. And that also takes us to the process that's going to take a little while. So I'm going to pause the video again and I'll resume it once it's done. So the process has finished. The machine rebooted automatically. And I want you to take notice here before we were logging in as administrator, meaning the local administrator. Now we're logging in as Haslin administrator because this is now a domain controller. That means two things. First of all, I'm locking in as the domain administrator now, uh, giving me pretty much all of the permissions I need. But secondly, on a domain controller, there are no local users. That's not a thing that exists. So what is the remaining steps that we have here? Well, first of all, we uh, obviously now know that this is a domain controller because we locked in as the domain admin. So the next steps would be to make sure that DNS is ready uh, to go. So uh, once we start deploying the <clears throat> vCenter, which I'll show you how to do in the uh, very next video, uh, machine is still kind of starting up, so it's a little bit slow. Uh, once again, I probably gave it a little bit, a little bit too little CPU and memory, but um, I don't usually reboot these machines too much, so that should be fine. All right, so let's go to DNS tools and DNS, minimize this. Okay, that gives us the domain controller here. Maximize this a little bit, expand it out. So there's two things we want to know about. First of all, we have forward lookup zone. So here we have our Haslund.lab. Uh, see there's a DNS entry for the domain controller already. So what else did we uh, put into the domain already? Well, first of all, we had our host, which was, uh, I believe, ESX layer zero dash O one, and I think we gave that uh, 168.1.30. And then you see here it says create associated PTR record. Well, I, I, I could try and do that, but it's going to fail because as you can see, there is no PTR uh, possibility pointer record. That's a reverse DNS. So I'm actually going to cancel out and go over here and say, hmm, add a new zone. Well, let's, let's go and do that. So next, um, here we have a primary zone. We want to have it on all, uh, let's see here, all DNS is running on domain controls in this forest. Yep, let's do that. IP version four, yes. Network ID 192.168.1. Okay, yes. Only allow secure updates. This is the normal recommendation. We might change it to this later on, but um, we'll suggest we keep this for now. Okay. Later on, we might even add in a second zone, but uh, I'm not going to add that in for now. So you might be wondering why, why are we making this? Why is this so important? Because when we deploy the vCenter, it will need not only forward DNS, it also will require reverse DNS. So let's go back here. So we'll go back again, ESX layer zero, zero one dot Haslund.lab, okay, 2168.1.30, associated PTR record, okay, add host, done. Let's go down here and see. So we see there's a DNS record right here. Uh, whoops, uh, we have the DNS up here. Now we also need one for the vCenter. So I'm going to call the vCenter 01, 192.168.1.31, and we see that the PTR is already ticked, add host, and this is honestly pretty much it. The next steps, of course, would be to do something like, once again, check probably there are more Windows updates and things like that on this machine as a result of deploying these new services. So uh, you would wanna go to the menu, Windows update. Okay. And see a check for updates. So this was a fully patched machine, yeah, but as a result of the new rules, I suspect there will be some new updates and that's all fine. We'll just get those installed in case there is something. This also comes down a little bit to when exactly. Ah, yeah, so just some Windows update stuff. 
All right, so that was uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you uh, today. Please leave a comment where you're watching the video from. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.